The New York Islanders score a big, important 3-2 win over the Montreal Canadiens. But did they lose a key player to injury in the process? All that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show as we head down the home stretch of the season. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on today's episode or on a future episode, feel free to email us at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, uh, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. Uh, and uh, you can also follow the show on X at Locked On Isles. And you can follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all season long. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis. And it's great to talk Islanders hockey with you game time or any time. Whew, what, what a uh, tough but satisfying win for the New York Islanders. They beat the Montreal Canadiens 3-2 to two in OT. And look, this was not always pretty, but the Islanders did what they had to do to win this hockey game. And, you know, they, they were down. One nothing. They were down two to one, and yet they tie it up in the early in the third period, maybe early mid third period, and then the game winning goal, Kyle Palmieri with a great shot just under the crossbar, and the Islanders skate away with the three to two win. And you know what? At this stage of the game, doesn't matter whether you win in regulation or overtime when you're playing Montreal, a team that has already been eliminated from the playoffs. The bottom line is the New York Islanders got the two points, and that's what they really needed to accomplish. Uh, and that felt really good. And look, there are a lot of things to like about this game, and then there are a lot of things that drove all of us there a little bit crazy. Uh, first of all, great job defensively holding the Canadiens to just 14 shots on goal in this game. And, you know, you limit your opponent to 14 shots on goal in 61 minutes and one, you know, and 17 seconds rather of action. You're probably going to win more often than not. So that certainly helped. And, you know, they played overall really solid defense. Yeah, there were a couple of breakdowns. But, you know, for example, one of the goals uh, that the Islanders gave up, Matt Martin blocked a shot. He was down. He wasn't able to re-enter the play. So, yeah, the puck ends up in the back of the net. But what what could the Islanders really do about that? Uh, the fact that they didn't give up, that they came back. You know, the goal by Pierre Engvall was really good. The goal by uh, Casey Zizekas was pure hustle. And I have got to say, uh, Casey Zizekas has fit in really well on that first line with Bo and Barzi. And it, it, to me, you know, is he a long-term answer on that first line? Probably not. But right now, based on who's on the roster, the, the way that Casey Sezikis plays the game has fit in well with Bo and Barzi. And I think, you know, Sezikis can skate. He can give you that burst. He's all hustle. He's aggressive on the four check. You add that physicality and that hustle, that 
never ending desire to to go get the puck. And, uh, you know, to me, Casey Sezikis has worked out well on that first line and probably he'll stay there for a while, if not for the rest of the season. And what can you say more about Kyle Palmieri? Maybe out of all the players on this team who have done significantly better than they did under Lane Lambert since Patrick Waugh took over as the coach, Kyle Palmieri may very well be at the top of the list. 28th goal of the season. So, by the way, he needs two goals in the final three games to reach the 30-goal plateau, and I hope sincerely that he is able to, to reach that. But, you know, the Islanders coming up big in this game after uh, playing solid defense uh, and and just doing enough offensively to get the win. As far as the defense is concerned, I have to say, it is even more impressive that they held the Habs to just 14 shots on goal. When you consider that Noah Dobson only played a minute and 28 seconds of this game, left about five minutes into the game with an upper body injury, post-game Patrick Waugh basically saying he will be evaluated on Friday and uh, they're going to you know, determine whether or not this is, you know, whether he's okay or whether or not he is going to miss some time. And boy, oh boy, you know, Mike Riley stepped up. He had an assist. Uh, Adam Pellick had two assists. Ryan Polak had one. So the defense was active. And Riley and Aho, Sebastian Aho, kind of have to step up their offensive game in order to, uh, you know, make up for the potential absence of Noah Dobson and keep your eyes on X because I will tweet out something as soon as I hear the status. Ajo was in for Robert Bortuzzo who sat out this game and I think that the Islanders were very fortunate about that because Ajo can add a little more juice offensively than Bortuzzo and the Islanders in spite of having only five blue liners for almost the last 56 minutes of this game really did a good job of shutting things down. So those were the good points. The bad points, boy, the power play. Oh, uh, the power play. I mean, uh, oh, uh, the, the Islanders had four chances on the power play, and I don't think they registered more than one or two legitimate scoring chances. Couldn't get shots on goal. In fact, I think the Canadiens had a couple of shorthanded chances that were actually more dangerous than the chances that the Islanders had with the extra attacker. So, you know, the power play has got to get it going. Kudos, though, to the Islanders. They did not take a penalty all game except for J.G. Pajot, who dropped the gloves with Brendan Gallagher, and they both got five for fighting. So Montreal never went on the power play, and the Islanders really benefited from that because the PK, as we know, has struggled all season. So end of the day, the Islanders come up big and uh, that was great to see. I also want to say, uh, you know, we had our little meetup at this game. We were all sitting in section 118. So, you know, to Scott, who helped arrange everything, to Chris, to Andre, and to Dr. Rob, who I met uh, in the elevator heading up to to speak to a friend in, uh, during the second intermission. Thank you so much for all your kind words. And I had a great time uh, being at this game. And, and I hope uh, that we could set up some more get togethers, whether it's at a game or maybe we can meet up at a sports bar for, for Locked On Islanders viewers and listeners. Uh, it really was a pleasure. And thank you for all of the, the kind things you said about me and the podcast. I'm so glad you enjoy it. And uh, it was great to, see this game and, and and see the Islanders pick up two very important points in person. We have got a lot more to get to on today's show. We'll have our hero and go to the game. As promised, I will get to the mailbag. So uh, we will do that. Plus for our Islanders birthday of the day, one of the few Islanders players born in Poland. Let's see if you can guess who that is. He played for the Islanders in the late 1990s and early 2000s. We've got that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Policy Genius. And look, buying life insurance is not an easy thing to do, but Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you could find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. So, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. So, Policy Genius will give you unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team. Check it out. Thousands of five star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click on the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hero and goat of the game. This one is tough. Uh, I got to give the hero of the game. I'm going to give it to the game winning goal scorer. That is Kyle Palmieri. But there were a couple, I mean, I could give it to the other five defensemen who really stepped up uh, and played really well uh, in the uh, absence of Noah Dobson. But I'm going with, uh, going to go with Palms for getting that game winning goal. The other two goals were great in their own right. Engvall with a wicked wrist shot. And then the wraparound uh, by Casey Sezikis that really just sort of encapsulated the way he hustles and creates things. So overall, very happy with this effort. Go to the game. Uh, It's got to be the power play. It, It has to be the power play. 0 for 4 in this game, just listless and not getting the job done. So that is our hero and goat of the game uh, for the win over the Canadiens. Let's get to the mailbag. I did promise that I would get to it, and I apologize for taking so long, but uh, just so many things going on. But it's great to be able to answer your questions, and please feel free to send them in. I will. Uh, If there are emails, Uh, I will happily do at least one mailbag a week, maybe more, just to get to all of your questions. This one comes from Chris from Smithtown. Hi, Gil. Big win against the Rangers. Wanted your opinion on Sorokin. Why do you think he's struggling? Is it simply a lack of confidence, or do you think he overachieved in previous years, or is he just having a down year? With that, is Varley our number one? Who would you start if and when we make the playoffs? Wanted to know my views about the Pelic Mika Zabinijad uh, collision. I did cover that yesterday. So, Chris from Smithtown, thank you for uh, the question. Oh, one other thing he asked about Ruslan Ishkakov possibly leaving for the KHL. I think that's a real possibility uh, based on the fact that the Islanders have not called him up. Now, they may call him up for the playoffs, but I don't think he'll necessarily see the ice. So, Chris from Smithtown and Section 102. As far as Ilya Sorokin is concerned, I think he is just having a down year. Uh, I think part of it is he's tired. I think he faced a lot of shots, especially in the first, let's say, 55 games of this season. He went through a time when I think he played 14 games in a row when Varley was out and the backup was Ken Appleby. And uh, no offense to Ken Appleby, but the Islanders clearly did not feel comfortable putting him in to start a game 
So they had to ride Sorokin. And then, you know, for much of the season, he was facing 35, 40, 45 shots a game. So I, I, I think that is it. Is Varley our number one? Well, I think he's our number one right now. And I think Patrick Waugh has a certain level of trust in Varley from his time in Colorado when he coached Varley like a decade ago. And I think he will ride the hot hand. I think, you know, Ilya Sorokin, if you're going to ask me, who's the number one goalie on the New York Islanders overall, it's still Ilya Sorokin. And as far as the playoffs are concerned, I think Patrick Waugh will continue to ride the hot hand. I think there's there's three games left on the schedule. I think Sorokin starts at least one of them. And, you know, if he plays well in the first game, he may get a second game. If Varley cools off, I know Wah won't hesitate to go to Sorokin. But right now, Varley is the hot hand, and he will continue to w- ride that hot hand as long as he can. Uh, our next question comes from Sam from Port Washington. Uh, Sam says, I would like to know what you what your take is on Bo Horvat's contributions from this season thus far and how they would affect our performance in the playoffs. Sam, good question. Uh, look, Bo Horvat, 33 goals, 68 points uh, in the first 77 games this year. Not only has he been productive, and I remember saying, uh, every day, as may recall, before the season, you know, Bo has got to get us at least 25 goals. 30 would be awesome, but get me at least 25. Knowing that the Islanders play a much more conservative system than the Vancouver Canucks did when he was in Vancouver. And quite honestly, Bo Horvat has exceeded those expectations by scoring 33 goals. Not only has he done that, 18 of those 68 points have come on the power play. He has won a lot of face-offs. He's very good in the dot, and that's always important. He's clutch. He can kill penalties on occasion, and he gives you leadership. So, you know, you could say what you want. He wore the C in Vancouver, and I know he got some criticism from Canucks fans about his leadership at times, but I think he's been a really good leader on the New York Islanders, both by example, by his play on the ice and uh, in the locker room and the way he's been as a teammate. So to me, uh, Bo Horvat has been great. The Islanders will not make the playoffs, uh, you know, without more contributions from Bo Horvat. And if they're going to pull off an upset, whether they play, you know, the Rangers or the Hurricanes or one of, you know, Boston or Florida, which are really the only teams they can face in the playoffs, uh, regardless of who they face out of those teams, they're going to need Bo Horvat big time to come through if they have any chance of advancing in the playoffs and pulling off some kind of a run. So uh, great to see Bo Horvat getting the job done. Wanted to take a quick look at the playoff picture right now. With three games remaining for most of these teams, there's still five teams in it chasing two playoff spots. The Islanders have third place in the Metro with 89 points. Washington, uh, excuse me, Pittsburgh now has that second wild card with 86 points. Washington and Detroit and Philadelphia all have 85 points. Uh, Detroit and Washington have three games left. Philly, just two. So Philly can only tie the Islanders in points. They cannot pass the Islanders, but that tiebreaker could, you know, be, could allow Philadelphia to catch them. I really think the Islanders with one more win in their last three games have a pretty good shot of of still making the playoffs, but You know, I think three points in the last three games would almost certainly get them in, but you can't take anything for granted. And uh, right now, you know, they're four points ahead of teams that are not in the playoffs right now with three games to go. So one more win would be huge right now for the New York Islanders. We are down to the home stretch of this 82 game NHL season. And what a ride it's been, and it's been great to 
to share that ride with all the Locked On Islanders viewers and listeners. So thank you, everydayers, uh, for for being there and and for enjoying this show because I really love doing it. We've got more to get to on today's show. Saturday's game against the Rangers could be a real humdinger, uh, could be a circus, especially after what happened on Tuesday. We'll preview that game. We'll have our Islanders birthday of the day and a lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? Well, if you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you could do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments, and virtual interviews. Hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, Dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add ons every week, like breakfast, on the go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with factors, ready-to-eat meals, so you can get back to what you love doing this spring. We're celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out for Earth Day, Earth Month Eats, the badge on the menu for the lowest carbon footprint meals. You can head to factoredmeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 and use code LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Islanders, Rangers, 1230 in the afternoon, the dreaded Saturday matinee at Madison Square Garden. And this one is going to be for lack of a better way to put it, a grudge match after what happened Tuesday. Uh, It would not surprise me at all if the Rangers uh, end up going back to Rempe in the lineup. It would not surprise me at all if Noah Dobson is able to play, that somebody challenges him to drop the gloves, that Adam Pellick will be challenged to drop the gloves, uh, and that we could see uh, a fight breakout even right after the opening faceoff, and hopefully it it doesn't blow up into something more than that. This is the fourth and final meeting of the regular season between the Islanders and the Rangers. The Islanders lost the first two, and then of course won on Tuesday. Their only game at UBS Arena. The other Islanders home game was the outdoor stadium series game in the Meadowlands. Look. We all know the Rangers. They are a tough opponent, and they're going to be a little uh, angry having lost their last two games. Now, they are three points ahead of Carolina. Carolina has three games left. The uh, the Rangers rather only have two, so the Rangers need to win this game as well. Rangers, sixth in the league in goals scored, ninth in goals against, so top 10 in both categories, and top three on special teams. Power play is second in the league, 26.9% success rate. The PK is third in the league, 
83.7% success rate. The Islanders have got to stay out of the darn penalty box if they hope to win this game because giving the Rangers those chances, not going to work. Now, Jonathan Quick got the start against Philadelphia on Thursday, which means we probably see Igor Shesterkin again on Saturday afternoon. And it'll be an interesting decision for Patrick Waugh, whether he sticks with Semyon Varlamov, who played very, very well again against Montreal, or whether he tries to keep Ilya Sorokin sharp. Look, if the Islanders beat the Rangers, whether it's in regulation or in overtime or a shootout, uh, they may very well be able to either clinch a playoff spot or, or at least clinch a tie for a playoff spot. So, you know, Maybe you ride the hot hand one more time with Varley. Look, Artemi Panarin having an outstanding season, 46 goals, 116 points uh, going into that game uh, against the Flyers, which they lost 4-1. to one, And he actually did score his 47th goal of the year in that game. So, uh, you know, Artemi Panarin just having an outstanding season. Shesterkin. After a slow start, goals against down to 2.65. Save percentage now 9.10. He's 34-17-2. and two. Uh, And we know the names. And we know they're a darn good hockey team. And they are one of the Islanders' potential first-round matchups. Zabinijad, Kreider, and Roslovich are the top line. Second line, Vincent Trocek, Artemi Panarin, Alex Lafreniere. Alex Wenberg, Will Coyle, and Capo Caco are the third line. And then on the fourth line right now, <clears throat> Johnny Brzezinski, Barkley Goodrow, and Jimmy VC On defense, Ryan Lindgren and Adam Fox. Fox, so dangerous offensively. Jacob Truba and Keandre Miller are the second pair. Miller was a minus three against the Flyers. Eric Gustafson and Braden Schneider are the third pair. And as we mentioned, the goalies, Quick and Shesterkin. Blake Wheeler on IR out for the year. Philip Cheadle on IR. Unlikely we see him uh, in this game. And, you know, so much at stake. I want to make sure the Islanders, even if they get a, 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 another loser point in this game, it would go a long way to getting the Islanders closer to a playoff berth. And that is really what we want to see. And, and when you look ahead at the schedule, uh, no games on Friday that affect the Islanders' uh, chances of clinching a playoff berth. Although Carolina is in St. Louis, that may affect their opponent. And then, you know, Saturday, games to watch. Flyers hosting the Devils. You have that game's going to matter. Washington hosting Tampa Bay. Detroit in Toronto. Pittsburgh hosting Boston. Those are the games that are going to matter on the schedule. <clears throat> and then Sunday, Carolina is in Chicago. Those are the only relevant games this weekend, but boy, oh boy, are they important. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. I think this was an easy one based on the clue, but Saturday will be the 52nd birthday of former Islanders winger Marius Tchaikovsky, the na native of Radomsko, Poland. Drafted by the Bruins in the fifth round back in 1991, made his NHL debut with Boston in 93-94, later played for Edmonton, and then joined the Islanders for the 97-98 season. Stuck with them through 2003-2004, his best years, 99-2035 goals, 70 points, followed that up with 30 goals and 62 points in 2000. 2001. One of his better games with the Islanders, November 27, 2001. Islanders hosting the Capitals at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. And uh, after falling behind 3-0, the Islanders get back in the game. Marius Tchaikovsky scores on the power play late in the first period to make it 3-2. Brad Isbister and Alexi Yashin on the assist. Midway through the second, Tchaikovsky ties it from Mark Parrish and Michael Pekka. And then with the Islanders down 5-4 in the final minute, Tchaikovsky ties it by completing the hat trick. Mark Parrish and Alexi Yashin with the assist. Islanders beat, oh, actually tie the Capitals 5-5 in this one. Craig Billington was the goalie for Washington. Chris Osgood 
the goalie for the Islanders, Garth Snow, actually came in and played a minute and six seconds of this game, but uh, did not get a decision. Islanders end up tying Washington back in the days before there were shootouts and, uh, you know, mandatory uh, ends with a game where one team had to win. Uh, so, again, happy birthday to Marius Tchaikovsky, a great Islander back in the day. He is our Islanders' birthday of the day. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every dayers, we will be back on Monday uh, to cover everything. Now, remember, Monday, uh, it'll be the Islanders at the Devils. So we'll have a full preview of that game. We will also have our key takeaways from the game against the Rangers and Hopefully sooner than that, we'll have an update on Noah Dobson's status and a whole lot more. So make sure you join us for that. Enjoy the ride, folks. This is an exciting time of year for the NHL and for the Islanders. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.